Thank you, Anthony. And now Chris and Crystal will lead us in the lighting of the first candle of the Advent wreath, and there is a congregational response included in the bulletin. All right, so today we're lighting the candle of hope. In the days of exile and uncertainty, the prophet Isaiah cried out, Oh, that you would tear open the heavens and come down so that the mountains would quake at your presence. As when fire set twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. In the midst of our own encounters with uncertainty and upheaval, our longing for deliverance, Jesus calls to us, therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come. We wait as we will surprise again and again by God who shakes us out of our place and makes us up to the work of the kingdom of all our lives. We light this candle as a sign of our shocking hope. May we stay awake to God's activity in the world as we wait in expectation that even now God is with us, working to restore us to the fullness of life with God in one another. Amen. Okay, thank you, Chris and Crystal. And now for our stewardship moment, our final stewardship moment of the stewardship campaign, our stewardship committee chair, Lisa Middens. Morning. Morning. Thank you for introducing me, Reverend Andy. Sure. So, so as Reverend Andy said, this is our final Sunday in our stewardship season for this year, and the one we call Pledge Sunday, the day we offer our pledges of financial su support to sustain our church in the coming year, and then we have a fun celebration lunch, and everyone's invited, whether you pledge or not, or you're just here for the first time, next door lunch today. And please join us. So it's in the, what we call the chapel next door. So a member of our church and interfaith pastor, Reverend Linda Neese, kicked off our stewardship season this year on November 12th with a beautiful definition of Christian stewardship. Honoring our heritage and holding ourselves accountable for the human, financial, and natural resources entrusted to our care. For the past three Sundays, we've had a stewardship moments in worship, and today we conclude this season of reflection. If you have them on paper today, please put your pledges of support for 2024 in the offering plate during worship. You may also pledge by phone or email to our wonderful and fearless treasurer, Kathy Ryan. Can you wave, Kathy? Kathy's like, what? I have to wave. <laughs> and her email address I can give you, and our phone number I can give you if you want to see me after, so I won't read it out right now. Otherwise, uh, you may have it anyway. If you have any questions or concerns, you may ask any one of the stewardship group, Kathy, myself, Jennifer, uncles, or Reverend Randy. You know, he is. Uh, our stewardship theme this year from the UCC is Because of You, Our Church Changes Lives. And today I'd like to thank Jen Field, our leader of Kids Church, for sending me this lovely explanation of how our church's support for the Heifer Project changes lives. The Heifer Project is a wonderful program for children of the church to support because it really embodies so many of Jesus' teachings. In the parables of the Good Samaritan, he shows us that helping our neighbor could mean helping anyone, regardless of where they live in the world. Heifer International helps 19 countries around the world, Haiti to Honduras, Kenya to Bangladesh, Uganda to right here in the USA. Heifer supports families, often ones with children, which lets our children help other children that may be similar in age to them but in very different circumstances. And our children love the fact that they get to choose what to purchase with their monetary donation in a world where many kids don't get to exercise a lot of choice in their own lives. This ability to choose the gift that they are giving to another family lets them feel a sense of pride that they may not get anywhere else in their life. But the main reason 
I like supporting Heifer in the eye of Jen. She would definitely be here today. She's taking a well-deserved time with her work people to have a celebration. So, so when I say I, that's Jen. So the main reason I support Heifer is when you donate a cow, a flock of ducks, or a hive of bees, the family receiving the gift is asked to give the first offspring of their gift, a baby cow or baby ducks, to another family in their village or neighborhood. This way, heifer is the gift that truly keeps on giving. In Luke 11, 10 through 13, Jesus reminds us of the importance of helping people in need, not just through temporary solutions, but by teaching them how to do things for themselves. The verse reads, for everyone who asks receives, he who seeks finds, and to him who knocks, the door will be opened. It encourages us to think about our own part in helping others. Rather than offering short-term aid alone, it suggests that we should teach those around us how to become independent too. This Bible verse also serves as an important reminder that human beings have an intrinsic worth that goes beyond material possessions. Love and compassion should always be at the center of helping those in need. Those giving assistance should not look down upon those receiving aid, but instead trust that they have what it takes within them when given the right tools. This is the essence behind Jesus' teachings, and Heifer International does this work in our global community so beautifully. So thanks so much to Jen Field for her ministry to children in our church. She'd be here today. As I said, she's enjoying a well-deserved holiday work brunch this morning. Usually kids' church is right at 11, right? They, the kids leave right after the children's moment. So remember, because of you, our church changes lives. And I hope to see you next door for lunch after worship. Thanks, Lisa. And if you are able, I invite you to please stand for our opening hymn and candle lighting, red hymnal number 128, in the bleak midwinter, verses 1 and 2. May we now turn to our bulletins for the call to worship. Awake, people of God, and prepare for Christ's coming. Grace to you and peace from God who sends Jesus to us. Make your grace known to us, O God. Help us to become more aware of the gospel of We are all God's people, for God is the one creator. Our shared humanity with Jesus testifies to this truth. Let the mountains pray. Let the nations stand in awe and reverence. 
Praise the one who grants us the gift of life renewed. Give thanks for the revelation of creation's sanctity and of our own. And now coming together is this congregation in person, those visiting us through Zoom and also later through FCAT, our unison prayer. Amid the threatening clouds of the world's anger and strife, God comes to us in a most unexpected way to bring the light of a holy alternative. Into our days of worry and anxiety, God comes with the confidence of a new message. Enrich us, O God, with gifts that transcend life's disappointments. Reveal to us the generous compassion of a Savior who shares life with us and leads us to what he makes possible. Meet us where we are so that we may be equipped to endure the struggle for holy change. This Advent season, let hope emerge in us and through us. Amen. Today's scripture reading is Isaiah chapter 64, verses 1 through 9. Oh, that you would rend the heavens and come down, that the mountains would tremble before you. As when fire sets twigs ablaze and causes water to boil, come down to make your name known to your enemies and cause the nations to quake before you. For when you did awesome things that we did not expect, you came down and the mountains trembled before you. Since ancient times, no one has heard, no ear has perceived, no eye has seen any God besides you who acts on behalf of those who wait for him. You come to help of those who gladly do right, who remember your ways. But when we continue to sin against them, you were angry. How then can we be saved? All of us become like one who is unclean, and all of our righteous acts are like filthy rags. We all shrivel up like a leaf, and like the wind, our sins sweep us away. No one calls on your name or strives to lay hold of you, for you have hidden your face from us and have given us over to our sins. Yet you, Lord, are our Father. We are clay, you are a potter. We are all the work of your hand. Do not be angry beyond measure, Lord. Do not remember our sins forever. Oh, look on us, we pray, for we are all your people. So with the time for children, um, if, if, if you would like, you're more than welcome to come forward, um, adult and children, or we can just talk here. Would you like to stay there in your pew? That's fine. Okay, beautiful. So today is our candle of Advent hope right there, the first candle that is lit. And so I don't know if you've ever heard this little poem, but when I was a kid, we used to say this, but it's been so long since I was a kid, I had to write it down so I don't mess it up. Starlight, star bright. Have you ever heard that one? Yeah. Starlight, star bright, first star I see tonight. I wish I may, I wish I might have the wish I wish tonight. So you would go out at night and you look up into the darkening sky and that first star you see blinking up there, that's the one you would make your wish on. And you'd close your eyes and you'd make that wish out there in the night. And so I kind of thought about that when you got this Advent wreath with all these candles here, but there's only that one candle, the candle of hope that's burning. It's like that first star that comes out at night. And that first candle, that one of hope, it's like a wish. This is the things that we hope we can accomplish through our faith. 
And so eventually that candle of hope, which is burning all by itself, is going to be joined by peace and joy and love. And eventually on Christmas Eve, we're going to light the one in the center, the white candle for Christmas Eve, when we say that Jesus comes into our world, that brings God into our world. But it all starts with that one little light of hope. And that's what it is. It's we hope that all of these things come and Advent is our time when we can just kind of let that one candle kind of lead us forward in the hope that things can get better, that the world will be a nicer place, that it'll be a kinder place, a more gentle place, a more peaceful place. And what I like to watch during Advent is, you know, you could replace these candles every week so you always got a nice full set of candles. But I like the message that when you see that, Adam, that Advent candle of hope, when it's really on that fourth Sunday, it's just a little stub, it's because hope fights the longest and the hardest. I mean, when everything else in the world is saying one thing, hope has got to struggle as that one little light, that one little star you look up at, that one little candle, it's that little bit of hope, but it gives everything it has. And so by the time we get ready to light that Christ candle, hope will be way down there. It'll be exhausted, but it'll still be burning. And that's that message of hope. Never, ever give up. There's always hope because there's always Jesus. So that's our message for the children. And now we turn it over to the choir. And the choir's anthem today is Sounds of Advent. It is now time for us to share in our prayers. 
and we continue to offer prayers for peace in Ukraine and also in the Holy Land with that war between Israel and Hamas. This is a season when we ask for special prayers for peace. Also, we continue to pray for our nations. We face the reality of persistent and institutional racism. I'd like to offer prayers for friends of mine, Richard and Joseph, and one who is battling a severe blood disorder, that they may all enjoy quick and full recoveries. Uh, before we hit our yellow sheet, would anybody else like to share any joys, celebrations, concerns? Yes, Lisa. No matter what your politics are this morning, um, I just read this story that just grieves my heart and asks for prayers for people in, in Gaza right now and, and the headline was that they don't even want to live anymore. They're just so there's just so much killing. And it's just breaks my heart and it's being done in our name. Our tax dollars are supporting this and it's and the only I, I feel and this is my political position, the only way to end terrorism is more justice. More justice because the more you kill, the more Converts you get to that cause all over the world. So uh, that's just my political position. But just prayers for the whole situation. It's really, really terrible. Thank you, Lisa. Any other joys, celebrations, concerns? Okay, seeing none, let us turn to our yellow sheet and let us offer prayers for Alan, Alice, Anne, Antonia, and family. Art, Bill, Bonnie, Brenda, Cheryl, Cindy, Denise, Frank, Grayson, Heather, Jeff, John, 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 Kathy, Lauren, Leslie, Lynn, Marcia, Mary Jane, Michelle, Mike, Pauline, Sandra, Steve, Stephen, Thelma, Virginia and Richard, Wink, victims of violence and natural disasters anywhere in the world, and we pray for peace on earth. And may we now turn inward for just a few moments of silence and offer God those prayers that we choose not to say out loud, but we know that God can hear them. So just a few moments of silence. Jesus, coming to us as one of us on Christmas to share the hope that endures because of its basing, being based in God, reveal to us once more the power and the glory that resides in our faith. Let your still speaking word make its impact within and among us so that we may accept your mission for us to bring to the world the vision of what is possible when we live into our better selves, our godly selves, when we push aside greed and prejudice and war and violence and see ourselves and all people as loved by God. Come and live with us and inspire our hearts and our minds with Advent's promise of hope and deepen this awareness by hearing our prayers and answering them as you alone know best. These things we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. And may we now share in the prayer that Jesus gave to all of us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. We have all been enriched and strengthened in so many ways by the gifts of God, and now we have the privilege of sharing God's words through the ministry of this congregation. Our offerings enable our church's witness in this community and a caring outreach to those in need, whether they be right here in our local towns or even halfway around the globe. Let us give, a, let us give as we each have been blessed, and therefore may our contributions be as generous as our faith expects and as our conditions in life allow. 
and donations will be accepted now in person. And if you're joining us via Zoom or FCAT, they can always be mailed here. However you donate, it is appreciated. Accept, O Lord, these offerings, now to be placed here in your sanctuary as a symbol of our love for you and for all others. Today, as that lonely candle of hope burns, let us remember that we are a place of hope, that no matter the front page news, as we have heard from Lisa, no matter what we bring here of our own anxieties and worries, we are a people of hope. And that is such a priceless gift in our world today. So thank you to all of you who continue to support the work of this church, this little beacon of hope in the world, and may God bless you for your generosity and may God bless these gifts so that we may continue to preach that gift of hope to all who need it. In Jesus' name, amen. And, and today's gospel is taken from Mark chapter 13, verses 24 to 37. And Jesus said, But in those days, after that suffering, the sun will be darkened, the moon will not give its light, and the stars will be falling from the heavens. And the powers in the heavens, they will be shaken. And then they will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And then he will send out the angels and gather in his elect from the four winds, from the four ends of the earth to the ends of heaven. From the fig tree, learn its lesson. As soon as its branch becomes tender and puts forth its leaves, you know that summer is near. So also, when you see these signs taking place, you know that he is near, at the very gates. Truly I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all of these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will not pass away. But about that day or hour, no one knows, neither the angels in heaven nor the Son, but only the Father. Beware, keep alert, for you do not know when the time will come. It is like a man going on a journey when he leaves home and puts his slaves in charge, each with his work, and commands the doorkeeper to be on the watch. Therefore, keep awake, for you do not know when the master of the house will come, in the evening, or at midnight, or at cockcrow, or at dawn, or else he may find you asleep when he comes suddenly. And what I say to you, I say to all, keep awake. 
May the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts together be accepted to you, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. So, this is the sermon, um, but really you've had sermons from the very moment that we've started today's worship. Uh, We've had the stewardship moment, we've had the lighting of the Advent candle. All of these things are are coming together to, to, to speak this message of hope. And because it is a communion Sunday, I'm going to have to, I'll, I'll share this with Judy and she can post it or whatever, but there's just no way we can go through the whole sermon and then have a delicious lunch next door to culminate your stewardship campaign. But I do want to bring up a couple of things because Advent, remember for the past three weeks, well maybe you don't, but for the past three weeks, we've been talking about this, this message of judgment and like a fearful God coming into the world. And that was the end of the church year, the end of time, the end of the church year. And then you cross over to a brand new beginning. You come into church and you light a candle for hope. But you still have this gospel message that lingers of judgment. Where where is that positive message of hope? Where is that new beginning? How can we still have judgment sneaking into Advent? And I think it's because in Advent, which is simply a Latin word that means coming, we're talking about the coming of Jesus. And obviously right now, I think most of our mind, our attention is on the coming of Jesus at Christmas. It's going to culminate when we light that white candle, the symbol of the innocence of the Christ child coming at Christmas. But there's also another coming of Christ. And it's because I don't think even Christians are satisfied with the Christmas story. Um, As you've heard in the readings, like Crystal read from Isaiah, we had it in the, the part of the reading when we lit the candle from Isaiah. The the tradition about the coming of God into the world was a powerful God. You know, the the mountains are going to tremble. They're going to melt before the presence of the Almighty like a fire boiling water, you know, making it disappear. You know, for the ancient mind, that's that's like powerful. You know, the water just disappears. And so you got this image of a God coming into the world with fire and power and strength. And that is what all of the earliest Christians believed, that God is going to come into the world with power and glory and strength. And then we get the story you all know about a babe in swaddling clothes, ripped, torn bandages, you know, wrapped around a baby who has no house to go to in Bethlehem, has to be born out in an animal stable. You know, he's he's poor, he's humble, he's in a defeated nation, homeless, all that stuff. And so Christians tell that story with with great love, but we're not satisfied with that. We we trust that, we believe that, but we also want that powerful God is going to come with vengeance and judgment and set everything right because we can't do it. And so that two messages of the coming of Christ, the first coming and then that second powerful coming, they, they kind of compete against one another during Advent. And that's why you get that confusing message about hope, but you also get gospel stories about judgment. And so that's all taking place. Um, But I think we really have to deal with the fact that Jesus says today these rather confusing words. Truly I tell you, this generation, not us sitting here in 2023, his people in the year maybe 30 AD, truly I tell you, this generation, you farmers, you shepherds, you know, you people under Roman occupation, this generation will not pass away. They're gone. But they will not pass away until all of these things have taken place. When the mountains tremble and God comes down with all the power of the Son of Man and glory, this generation will not pass away until all these things have taken place. They've come and they've gone and it hasn't happened yet. What happened to Jesus' words? And think about the fact that Mark is sharing these words in the year 70 AD. So Jesus says them in 30, Mark writes them in 70, and he doesn't say it with any embarrassment at all. Forty years have passed since Jesus said this generation. That generation, by the time Mark is talking, has come and gone, and still the Son of Man has not returned. But Mark puts those words for us in Holy Scripture, and he's not embarrassed. I tell you, this generation will not pass away until all of these things have taken place. Heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. So Jesus is basically saying, I'm it. This is me. This is the full revelation of God. If you want to know how God is and how God will always be, look at me. Because I am the full investment of God in the revelation of who God is. And so he comes as that story of that humble child. He, 
he dies on a cross rather than lift a sword against someone who comes after him with clubs and, and you know, brigands out in the middle of the night. They nail, put nails into his hands and he says, Father, forgive them for they know not what they do. From beginning until end, you have a lived full revelation of God, of peace and forgiveness and hope. And so we have to trust that that is the full revelation of God because Jesus says this generation will not pass away. Otherwise, how do you make sense out of this generation will not pass away from the mouth of Jesus, from the pen of Mark? How do you make sense out of this generation will not pass away when they knew that that generation passed away? They're not looking for the far future. They're looking at Jesus. And they're saying Jesus is the full revelation of God. And in Jesus, that humble child, that one who comes a humble teacher, the one who dies on the cross as a criminal, that's the power of God. It's that message that, as we heard, you're not going to defeat the sword by the sword. You're only going to make other enemies. What you need to do is live into an alternative, more powerful, more glorious, more divine life, which is to live like Jesus lived. That is the gift of hope. And so that's how we begin this Advent season, in Jesus' name. So let us now turn to our communion hymn. There's been a change uh, here, but it is posted up there. It is red hymnal number 108, and it is awake for night is flying. Red hymnal number 108. No, 108, there was a change. What am I talking about? Did I get this wrong? Oh, we're singing. Oh, okay. So, okay. So the closing hymn is 108. I'm sorry. Sorry, Anthony. Communion hymn is red 122. God rest you, merry gentlemen. Then the closing. Okay. Hymn of closing is 108. Sorry about that. There's still hope for me. Thank you. <laughs> sorry for the confusion. <laughs> have a communion insert in your bulletins. This table is for all Christians who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. The gospel tells us that on the first day of the week, Jesus was raised from death, appeared to Mary Magdalene, on that same day sat at the table with two disciples and was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. This is the joyful feast of the people of God. Women and men, Youth and children, wherever you are, gather table. For this table is for all people who wish to know the presence of Christ and to share in the community of God's people. God be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to God Most High. We give you thanks, God of majesty and mercy, for the beauty and the bounty of the earth and for the vision of the day when sharing by all will mean scarcity for none. We rejoice that you call the entire human family to this table of sacrifice and love. We come in remembrance and celebration of the gift of Jesus Christ, whom you sent to be the good news. Born of Mary, our sister in faith, 
Christ lived among us to reveal the light and life of your grace, to suffer on the cross for us, to be raised from death, and then to live in glory. We bless you, gracious God, for the presence of your Holy Spirit in the church among us, and with your daughters and sons of faith in all times, all places, we praise you with joy by saying, Holy, holy, holy God, Lord and majesty, the whole universe speaks of your glory. O oh God, most high, blessed is the one who comes in the name of our God, Hosanna in the highest. We remember that on the night of Jesus' betrayal and arrest, that he took bread, gave you bread, gave you thanks, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, This is my body that is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Ministering to you in Christ's name, I share with you the bread. In the same way, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me.
ministering to you in Christ's name, I share with you the cup. May we now share in the prayer of thanksgiving. Almighty God, we give you thanks for the gift of our Savior's presence in the simplicity and splendor of this holy meal. Unite us with all who are fed by Christ's body and blood, that we may faithfully proclaim the good news of your love, and that your universal church may be a rainbow of hope in an uncertain world. Through Jesus Christ, our Redeemer. Amen. Hey, how about this for our closing hymn? <laughs> how about if we do red hymnal number 108, Awake for Night is Flying. Thank you for all coming out today on a kind of dreary Sunday, but you came to church and uh, hopefully that brightened up the day a little bit. And I hope that continues as we go next door to the chapel for our stewardship completion uh, um, dinner, lunch. And so I hope that you'll all join us over there as well. Let us now share in our benediction response. The time is coming when God will tear open the heavens and come down to live among us. Be alert, be watchful, Anticipate and awe and wonder what it means for God to live among us as one of us. Know that God is faithful and that Christ walks with us always. With hearts full of gladness, let us do what is right. With hope, let us go forth to love and serve the Lord among all whom we may meet. Amen.